the time. Um, would anybody like to comment on either anything that I've tried to raise or any points from the verse that they feel are important for everyone else's benefit? So, uh, I would like to, may I say a couple of um, sentences? Please do. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You, the presentation was very good and from different perspective, yet very relevant to the verse. And the only one thing is, big, uh, Krishna is like a powerhouse, house, I mean, um, source of the main uh, electric powerhouse. And when we have to get the electricity in our houses, we can't directly connect to the powerhouse. It doesn't work that way. We have to be connected to the local, local station, in the same way, to get the knowledge, we need the mercy of the Shiksha Guru, Shiksha Guru. Without Guru's mercy, it doesn't happen. And hence, it's the importance of Guru Parampara. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Yeah, very, it's a very relevant point. It's one that I think most people were aware of, so I didn't want to raise it for this class. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think it's a nice point because often people like criticize Krishna in this way that, you know, why do we need to go through Guru, right? Why do we need to, why can't we approach Krishna directly? Well, Krishna explains here, it's because this is his system. This is how he wants to do it. So far be it from us to kind of go over Krishna's head. We need to do things in the way that he appreciates. So yes, Guru is not um, like, a, like a middleman or a middle person. No, this is actually being done because this is how Krishna wants to, to do this. So he's establishing that this chain of disciplinary succession is there. Because otherwise, if he didn't want to do that, Krishna is fully able to come and speak to each of us individually and give us the Bhagavad Gita. Right? Krishna is more than able to do that. But he's, a, he's establishing that this principle of Guru is there. I think I've mentioned this a few times. But it's such a wonderful principle. I heard many moons ago when we holding a Shivra Maharaj you know, on his podcast. And he was establishing how um, one of the things that Krishna likes to do, uh, I have to make, have to quote this correctly. Um, Krishna takes great joy in empowering his devotee to do things that even he doesn't do. Right? Krishna takes great joy in empowering his devotee to do things that even he doesn't do. So what does that basically mean? Um, Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita on the battlefield of Kurukshetra for uh, the benefit of the kings there, right? Very purposely done that Krishna speaks to Bhagavad Gita while all those kings are present. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then takes that message and spreads it all over India. And then Srila Prabhupada takes that message and spreads it all over the world, right? So um, many, many times um, it's pointed out in classes that Krishna also is completely capable of winning the entire Mahabharata single-handedly. And in a sense, actually, he's the reason that the Mahabharata is won. So why, why then Arjun is given this position? is because Krishna wants Arjun to have that glory, right? He wants Arjun to be the hero. So that's why he's doing so much assurance for Arjun. Look, I've, I've already, in my universal form, I've eaten the entire army and I've crushed them between my teeth. Victory is completely assured for you. You just go and fight. I've already decided on the outcome. Why go through all that effort, right? These issues come about when we deny the personality of God. If we think of God as a system, if we think of God as just energy and we deny the Lord personality, these problems come about, right? The Lord is a form of energy. Why can't we just connect to him? Well, it's because he's a person and he doesn't want to do it that way. You know, Krishna is so powerful. Why did he empower Arjun to um, fight? Why not just fight himself? Because he's a person and that's what he wanted. So it's very important we, we understand this principle of the Lord being the supreme person. And so as a person, he has personality, he has thoughts and feelings and an idea as to how he wants to do things. And luckily, through Bhagavad Gita, we're able to understand that. So thank you, Dharma Vipra, for raising that point. Um, anybody else before we take questions? Okay, does anybody have any questions at all? We just have a beep. Madhurananda Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Um, although it's, a, it's clear and it's not clear, why Bhagavad Gita is called the Supreme Science? Mm, this, could, yeah. so, this term Supreme Science is it, it's given in many places, but um, 
Um, it, I think part of it is the way that Srila Prabhupada translates that point as to why it's called a supreme science. So first of all, the principle of supreme has to be analyzed first. So why is Bhagavad Gita given as supreme? If we analyze the Bhagavad Gita from the Vedic point of view, it is an incredible scripture. Okay, why is it an incredible scripture? So we have this body of Vedic knowledge, okay, that is presented, you know, in, in so many different ways, but this body of Vedic knowledge is there. Now, Arjun is uh, at the beginning point of the, of the Bhagavad Gita, um, unwilling to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. So Arjun requests the Supreme Lord. We have to understand, like, Krishna is like a master orchestrator. He's planned out this whole Mahabharat so that this event can take place. Now, look at the situation that Krishna is presenting, right? Arjun is approaching Krishna as guru, sorry, as a disciple. Please, Krishna, you become my guru, okay? So number one, Arjun is able to hear from the Supreme Lord directly. Krishna has arranged that situation. Then he says, my Lord, please instruct me as to what I should do. By the way, a battle's about to happen. We don't have like Parikshit Maharaj's liberty of seven days to discuss this, right? We've got, what is it, like 45, 50 minutes? So what, what does this create? It creates a situation where Krishna is giving the highest principles, but with none of the fluff added, right? We have to get to the point. We don't have you know, any time to kind of deliberate on this. We have to kind of get to the, the direct essence of what's given. So Krishna does something very, very clever. He doesn't just try to present everything as fast as he can. He says, okay, well, look, we've only got this time. I will just tell you the most important things the most important things, which is why it is such a powerful scripture, right? You know, so many times like um, <laughs> we see it in so many different things where like a sports event will happen and you don't get a chance to, to watch that event, whatever it might be, right? So what happens? Just give me the highlights. What are the important things I need to know? Or is studying a subject. I wasn't able to attend all the classes. What are the most important things I need to know, right? It's not to say that the other Vedas don't have value. But in the context of Krishna giving bhakti, he is establishing these are the most important things. These are the things that are of most value. So he's almost taken that um, discussion in the Srimad Bhagavatam given by Sukadev Goswami in seven days. And even from that extracted the essence and said, right, I've only got this much time. So you imagine for a moment, just imagine, right? You're in a situation where somehow or another you're trapped with some world leader and the world is about to end. And the world leader says, oh, you're a, you're a person of God, aren't you? Listen, we're about to die. We probably have about five minutes. What should I know? Can you present Bhagavad Gita in that way? You have five minutes to give me the most important things I need to know in this critical situation. Can you do it? Krishna can. Secondly, why refer to as a science? Okay, Why not just simply theology or just theory? Because it can be applied. I like to always point out the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is like the uh, the teacher giving the, the instructions and Arjuna is the student receiving. So we see both sides of the equation. Sometimes in Shastra, it is simply about a, a person giving knowledge. But Arjuna here is receiving and so he's able to consider how to apply that knowledge. We don't always have that luxury, right? So that's what makes Bhagavad Gita a supreme science. The supreme uh, knowledge is given in a very direct uh, I want to say concise, but a very direct way where only the essential is given and a science because origin is there listening and applying. Um, so that's why I would feel that when Srila Prabhupada translates that point in the Bhagavad Gita, he refers to it as a supreme science. Any, anything else on that, Prabhu? Or does anyone else have any questions? No, thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Any other questions at all? I've got, I've got a couple of questions. Please. Um, so, one question, well, one um, thing that Guru Mahal talks about is science is um, like mathematics is a science of numbers. Mm. And I'm trying to remember his exact wording. And chemistry is the science of chemicals, like this. And so, actually, um, like spirituality is a science, effectively. Yeah. And it's not. It's not faith, it's actually a science. Yes. And it's like realizing like our position and God's position and how we're connected to him, basically. Definitely. In short. So yeah. in that way, it's like a science. And if it's treated like a science, then 
there'll be less problems because if it's treated like a faith that's when there's a lot of problems yes yeah so, so kind of sorry. That. no no that's fine i just wanted to share that <laughs> no that's fine sorry i didn't want to interrupt you sorry no, no that's fine and um yeah so there was a couple of things one was um if you've got time one was um how can we you know how you you were starting with a point about how we need a guru mm. because a lot of people think they don't need to go through a guru they can just yes. talk to krishna direct they can pray to him direct and mm -hmm. you know we see the guru as like a via medium like a telescope yes where you know especially with the guru from Parah, it helps us to get closer to krishna like quicker basically mm -hmm. because it's them giving the blessings mm -hmm. and it's not um you know who are we to have a direct <coughs> relationship with krishna yeah so I love that can you just elaborate on that a little bit? yeah absolutely and i mean also, I, I think you've explained there was another that. question um about about praying <laughs> about praying <coughs> so are you there yeah, there are yeah i think this is i mean maybe if you can I, if, there's there's some lagging i think there's lag. i'll take my camera off yeah. I'm going to take my camera off because I it's. I think it's lagging we'll the, the camera. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, what was the what was the question in regards to praying? So there was a question about praying, and this came from one of our sangha members. But basically, yeah. that you know, for example, we've been praying. I mean, we've been praying so much for um, things, right? So we asked, yeah. for example, you know, recently the whole world's been praying for Guru Maharaj, and yeah. and you know. Um, the way what we've asked Krishna, even if we've asked him for it's his desire, you know, yes. staying on the on the planet, you know, that yes. has happened. So basically, you know, how do we see it that a lot of people will see it that Krishna's not helping? Oh yes. Okay. That even I'm though sorry. we're praying, he's not helping, he's not answering our prayers, he's not listening to us. So yes. that was one of the questions. I mean, I've got an answer, but I'd like to hear your answer. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's a really nice point because it's something I used to I used to ponder a lot in kind of my my younger days. Um, so let's let's see how we should do this. I think probably we let's address the question first. Actually, I mean, because the point about approaching Guru, I think you've actually answered very nicely um, in that. Why do we not need to approach Krishna directly? Well, first of all, like, please, please show me the way Krishna says approach me directly. Right. Show me when that takes place, because Krishna doesn't say that. He asks that we approach him through Guru. He gives that point very, very clearly. Um, and I think it's it's really wonderful if we analyze it, why Krishna does that. It shows he's, it's, it's a personal point, right? That Krishna trusts these um, teachers so much that he wants us to approach through him, right? Um, somebody gave like a really wonderful point. This I, I, can't, I wish I could remember who said this point, but it blew my mind. Um, but I would kind of always ask like, you know, why can't, you know, Krishna's so powerful, et cetera. Why don't we approach him direct, directly? And so somebody explained this said, so, so what, is the, what is the highest thing that Krishna is offering? So what is the highest thing that Krishna is offering? So I said, okay, well, it's bhakti, it's service, right? Mm. That everyone's happy with that point, right? So service is the highest thing. So we said, so if we don't approach guru, what service will the guru do? Right? So by approaching guru, actually the guru then gets an opportunity to serve the Lord. So just try to imagine these very elevated souls who are continually praying to Krishna. My Lord, please render me some, give me the opportunity to serve you. Please give me some service. Okay, well, here is your service. Educate these people and bring them to me. Right? Yes. So it's actually all part of Krishna's understanding. You know, these people are also asking for service. So if we do not approach Guru, then what will Guru do? That is their service, right? That is what Krishna wants them to do. So actually we're pleasing the Lord by engaging the guru in that service, by offering ourselves at their lotus feet as disciples. So mm. that's, a, that's an important point, you know, for them, that's their service. But let's talk about prayer. I think prayer is such a wonderful topic and I wish we had more time. Uh, we can we could, we could talk about and spend an entire sangha talking about prayer. Okay, so number one, let us understand what prayer is, first of all, okay? So one approaches the Supreme Lord and actually, the, the 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 term prayer to an extent is is slightly misunderstood from a vedic point of view actually prayer is only for glorification so when we read prayer when we um, understand the prayers that are offered 
they are offered with the mood of glorifying the Supreme Lord. Okay. Um, and when we kind of read petitioning, because there's different types of prayer, right? There's prayer in the mode of bhakti in that. It is purely for the glorification of the Lord. Then there is a, is a, is a mixture of where prayer is for the glorification of the Lord, but at the same time, there is some element of passion in that we are requesting something as well. Okay. So um, I, I, I simply wish this form of yours as Baal Gopal remains forever in my heart. And I don't desire any kind of liberation. Okay, so there's a mixture there. But, or, sorry, I was going to say that's that's the element of passion because it's desire. Well, it's it is and it isn't because actually what's being prayed for is something to help your bhakti, right? So that's slightly yeah. different. And then there's prayer that you know, my lord, please make me a millionaire so I can build a temple for you. So there, there's more of a mixture, and there is just the my lord, please help me. Okay. Now, the first thing to point out is that prayer is not a bad thing. Even if one is approaching the Supreme Lord and praying for something material, that's better than just trying to achieve those things via material means. So we should encourage people to approach the Lord. It's not that we should say, oh, don't go to Krishna and ask for that. Because Krishna does something very, very clever. Okay. Mm -hmm. If a person approaches the Lord, with the prayer, whatever it might be, Krishna will somehow or another turn that into bhakti. Okay, we'll make that point again. When somebody approaches the Lord in prayer to ask for something, no matter what it is, somehow or another, Krishna will turn that into bhakti. The demigods don't do this. Generally speaking, the principle with the demigods is if the demigod is able to offer, if one approaches in the correct way, performing the correct ceremony, then the demigod is obliged to give. Okay, but Krishna, it's different. I love the point that's made during the pastime of Bali Maharaj. Krishna points out that for one who is my devotee, I show my love by doing what? Who knows? Taking things away from them. Taking everything away from them. Taking everything away from them. Yeah. My spiritual master loves to point out that he says Krishna is a selfish lover. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that um, he goes, I don't want to. I, Krishna doesn't want to share us with anybody else. So somehow or another so yes let's analyze this right so we are approaching the supreme lord and we are praying my lord please um, keep um, saintly souls who are about to leave this world please keep them here right please keep them here so yeah. krishna is analyzing okay so what is being done okay why is this prayer being offered because actually we should understand this i this is something that i've been thinking about for a long time in regards to um his holiness bhakti charamaj right Mm -hmm. So for practically his entire life, while Srila Prabhupada was present on this planet, he was absor absorbed in one thing and one thing only, and that was serving Srila Prabhupada, right? Mm -hmm. When Srila Prabhupada left this world, he was absorbed in one thing and one thing only, and that was serving Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So what is his ultimate desire? To serve Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So why would we deny him that? Yeah. So we are we are praying to Krishna, my Lord, please keep Maharaj here. Okay. But what is Maharaj's desire? Yeah. So now Krishna can do some very, very clever things, right? So let's now analyze if we can. Let's be a little careful about how we do this. Um, but if we try to look at it from Krishna's point of view, so what Krishna will be thinking is, why do you want that? Why do you want Maharaj to be here? Yeah. Right? So one might say, okay, well, because I need the guidance of Guru. Krishna yeah. says, well, Maharaj has given so many instructions. Yeah. He's written so many books. Srila Prabhupada has given so many books. There are so many disciples there. So guidance is there. Yeah. So why do you want him here? Yeah. Right? So we have to, so Krishna can see that and he can see actually, okay, well, what is the intention of the prayer, right? Yeah. So in another sense, somebody may very genuinely say, look, I'm not strong enough to do this on my own. And if Maharaj isn't here, I don't know if I'm going to be strong enough to continue. Krishna says, okay, then perform your service in separation. Yeah. Right? Let that memory intensify your devotion. Okay? Because let's face it, I mean, I, I, I marvel at how clever Krishna is, right? So your spiritual master is put in such a horrible position, but he mm -hmm. practically, because of this situation he was in, practically the entire world was engaged in devotional service. Right? Girtan was happening non-stop. Japa was happening yeah. non-stop. Yeah. Okay? 
just because of, I mean, I say just because of, please forgive me, but because of the situation your spiritual master was in, look how intensified our devotional service became. Yeah. Right? Look at how connected people became. Yeah. Look at how much conversation was happening in glorification of your spiritual master and therefore Srila Prabhupada. But it's very clear, at least to me, and I, I, I pray I'm not committing any offense by saying this, and please forgive me, my Lord, if I am, but I don't think there's any doubt as to what Maharaj's desire was. Yeah, no he doubt. wants to eternally serve Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And Krishna yeah. Pro promises in the Bhagavad Gita what we meditate on at the time of death that we will attain without fail. I don't think there would be anything on Maharaj's mind other than serving Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. So why, why would we deny him that? So I, I, I and, and again, please forgive me. I know I know that's probably there's some I'm saying some things which are probably very difficult to hear. No, no, um, it's it's a really it's a really good answer because I mean I'm just talking here, you know, I'm hoping everyone's okay for me to talk like this. Please. But I've heard so many exalted Vaishnavs or you know, our gurus, our GBC, our you know, Guru Maharaj's godbrothers talking about the exact same point that literally, you know. I mean, I was talking, I was listening to Urmila Mataji today, and Urmila Mataji is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And she was saying that he, um, like Bhakti Thakur, he, you know, towards the end of his time on this planet, he had time out yeah. on his own, doing his own bhajan. Yeah. And Guru Maj, he needed that time as well. Mm. And he has had that time, what was it, three weeks, without yeah. having any interference, without having any GBC meetings or any mm. service to the devotees or anything to have his connection with Krishna and Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. And it was just so amazing how she said it. And also the fact that, you know, we don't know what 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 plans Srila Prabhupada has for Guru Maharaj mm. and how, you know, there's another place that he's going to go and serve Srila Prabhupada. He's definitely with Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Wherever Srila Prabhupada wants him to serve, he's there. And that might be a greater need than our need. Definitely. Because Definitely. our need will be will be achieved by, like you're saying, association of devotees through his vani, through his instructions, through you know association of devotees that are you know going to support us. You know, through all the all the siksha gurus that we have in ISKCON, it's amazing. It's amazing what we have. Yeah. And we have, and Urmila Mataji is saying that how we have so much um, because of internet, we yeah. can connect to him. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and yeah, and we're praying so intensely because of our desire and obviously what we need, but we don't know what Shri Prabhupada needs even more. Yeah. And actually, like one of the things I think about in regards to that, I always meditate on how when I hear, for those of you who don't know these devotees, but Chithi Shakti Mataji, Buddha Bhavana Prabhu. Yeah. Um, when, I, when I hear them speak, it's like Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj is still here. Yes. Right? Their spiritual master who left yeah. this world. Yes. And for me, the thing that, I hold on to is actually we should act in such a way that our spiritual masters are never forgotten. Why? Because we personify their mood. Right? We personify their mood. So actually the guru remains glorious and their mm. teachings are still there because we become in the walking embodiment of their teaching in the same way that Maharaj was a walking embodiment of Srila Prabhupada's teaching. Mm. Right. So actually, if the disciples are continuing their Krishna consciousness and their preaching in the way that they are, Maharaj will never be forgotten. Yeah. In the same way that because of the way that he acted and all of Srila Prabhupada's disciples are acting, Srila Prabhupada's never forgotten. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We should, you know, I always like, I, I always make this point to the younger devotees. And I think it's one that we need to always remember. But I encourage all of you to have this like visualization um, that. When you're performing your devotional service or whatever it might be, do, do you have you seen like in like old American films where they have these hotels and they have these like big neon signs outside that same motel or hotel? Mm -hmm. Imagine your spiritual master's name or Srila Prabhupada's name is above your head in that way, <laughs> right? And whatever you do, everybody can see that, mm. right? So it's it's funny how like when we're not performing our devotional service properly, actually the focus is on us. You know, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing this properly? You know, do you not understand what the right thing to do is? But actually, when we do our devotional service properly, I've had people, I've seen people like approach devotees like, who's your guru? Like, they just ask directly. Like, I'm so amazed by your devotional service. Who's your guru? And that glory is still there. Yeah. 
it is still yeah. maintained so we yeah. if we continue to act in a way that we are becoming the embodiment of our spiritual master or Srila Prabhupada's instructions mm. actually they they've never left right yeah, absolutely but Thakur makes this point you know Vapu and Vani we understand this um, but that's that's as much our duty, whether the guru is is here or not, because they're doing the same thing in terms of trying to personify what Shri Prabhupada's given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. But it's a, a bigger bigger discussion for another time, I think. It's yeah, there's, always, there's always a bigger picture that we always. don't know of. We don't know. Yes. So. And, <laughs> and the other thing I was going to say, sorry, this again, sorry, and this this is like a long answer. Um, but actually, we should understand that Krishna actually is answering our prayer. He is always answering our prayers. But the point is, he knows what we actually need, right? So even though we may ask for something, like sometimes, uh, let me give an example, like, um, you know, Madhav may want something, like he want, may want to play with something that he knows he shouldn't play with, or he'll want to do something that he knows is wrong. It's actually just because he's like hungry or tired. So it's not that I should fulfill his prayer, but I should understand the intention behind his prayer and give him that. Mm -hmm. Right? So Krishna does the same thing. Yeah. We pray and Krishna gives us what we need. Yeah. Not what we want. But the prayer is how he sees what we want and translates that into what we need. Yeah. And actually, if we analyze it from Bhagavatam, Krishna does this all the time. Right? Devotees approach him and ask for something. Seemingly they don't get what they ask for. But in the end, they, they get what they want, right? Yeah. Okay, right. Um, any other questions? Sorry. Much more that we could discuss, I'm sure. So depending on how we're doing for time, um, if, I, I mean, I, mean I, I have to be, um, let's see how we say this. If anybody would like to speak something about Maharaj, we'd be more than happy to hear. Um, I know, I suppose, I suppose like for many of you, we've had opportunities to be part of remembrance programs and to speak something, but just for us as a Sangha, for our benefit, um, if anybody would like to glorify Maharaj, um, His Holiness Bhattacharya Maharaj, um, now would be a wonderful time to do so. Um, so we can kind of meditate on those points and think about how we can apply them to our Krishna consciousness. So maybe what we'll do, let's see. I don't know if I can see kind of the group order in any way. So, okay, we've got it. Let's, let's see how we can do this. So maybe if I could ask, um, is Grace Dharma Beer Prabhu and Grace Dharma Mataji, if they, would, if they would be so kind, if they so desire, if you don't want to, of course, that's also fine, um, to speak something about Maharaj. And we'll try and go down the list and maybe everybody can say something. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madhurananda Prabhu. Uh, personally, I genuinely feel that even if we, uh, remember Maharaj, early in the morning we feel we get purified. There is a Sanskrit term called Prata Smaraniya, means one that has to be remembered early in the morning. Maharaj is one of those exalted personalities because he was purely dedicated to Srila Prabhupada and uh, he has got empowerment to empower others and um, when Guru's Bapu form or the physical form is there that is different taste when Bapu form is not there still the disciple can be connected with the spiritual master spiritual master is eternal and pure servant of Krishna and uh, disciples uh, missing now that's that's not very good but um, spiritual master can fulfill your prayers, uh, all your spiritual prayers. And um, Bhakti Saru Maharaj, his dealings, I, um, I didn't get much chance to associate with him. I regret, I, I wish I had got more chance to associate with him, to serve him more, and that's my regret. But based on my short, uh, un, uh, limited um Understanding about Maharaj, amazing, exalted, and pure. He's very honest and he likes others. He's, he's so 
able to cope, take the, all the pressures, still be happy and serve Srila Prabhupada, as you said. That's all I wanted to mention. Um, I think that that's from both of us. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Anil Prabhu, would you like to say something? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, thank you for asking me to say some words on uh, Bhakti Jaru Maharaj. He, he, Bhakti Jaru Swami Maharaj, he, he was uh, a very, very... Uh, I, I have no words, Prabhuji. Actually, I met uh, him uh, three, four times only. But uh, whenever I met him, I had a strong effect. I felt a strong effect. And uh, he was... Uh, I was aspiring to... Uh, take him as my Guru Maharaj, but uh, unfortunately I could not do that. But uh, I many times uh, heard the online lectures and uh, I saw before he came to USA, he was uh, giving three, four or even five sometimes lectures in different languages like uh, in Bangla, in English and in Hindi. He had a full energy. He, he didn't uh, had any... Uh, he was... Uh, he was uh, such a divine personality, he would know everything in advance because uh, his desire was to serve Prabhupada. And when he left India, he clearly said that uh, for the sake of others' spiritual advancement, we don't care about our own spiritual advancement. And uh, he knew that uh, he called America, USA as a hellish place. And he was ready to go to that hellish place. He didn't want to hide away in this difficult time when all the disciples they were struggling there they were uh, 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 doing his work under his instructions for the mission to save the cows and he went there to support them and uh, there whatever happened but still he united all the world like you said you very beautifully told everything that uh, even in his last uh, period when he was in hospital physically looking when we look physically we, we see that his body was in that condition but still he was uniting everyone all the disciples all the other devotees and all the Vaishnavas all over the world everyone was praying and uh, everyone was uh, taking krishna's name and everyone was everyone was united with the harinam that was amazing and still after he, he went away still he is uniting everyone with the holy name Hare krishna Varuji. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Very kind of you. Um, thank you for sharing those words with us. Um, I don't know whether Devi Mataji, if you would like to say something. Sorry, Devi Mataji. Did you want to speak something? No, it's okay. Okay, just sorry. Listen. No problem. Sorry. Thank you, Mataji. Right. Um, oh, sorry. I should have asked them. Uh, Anil Prabhu, did Mamta Mataji want to say anything? Prabhuji, uh, actually, she is not able to speak at the moment. She is not feeling very well. No problem. So, thank you. Okay, uh, who is next? Um, Priti Mataji, are you there? Would you like to say something? Well, everyone. Yeah. I don't know the Maharaj very well as him personally, but. He's like a divine person. I can't say more than that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mataji. Very kind of you. Um, Mum, would you like to say something? Sorry. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna, everybody. Um, like, like you said, like Madhuranda said, that um, Guru Maharaj um, lives through the... Uh, uh, whenever they leave the world they haven't gone they all are still living in their disciples and and prime example is for me guru maharaj will always be here because every time i i'm with yadurani he will always be with me because yadurani and family and all our disciples in our sangha you know they they're such good examples of Maharaj's teachings that I don't think he'll ever be gone. 
I personally didn't know him that well. The, the only thing I will always remember is that beautiful smile. And, and, and there was an aura about him always, you know, you looked at him and, and it just took you back for a second. But yeah, a big, big loss, big loss. But still, the disciples will, you know, um, give us a glimpse of Maharaj now and again. So I think he'll be with us all the time. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mums. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, that, that smile was something, I tell you. Um, Sakesh Mataji, would you like to say something? Rajananda, Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna. Can I say in Hindi if you don't mind? Yeah, please go ahead. I would like to say well, what uh, uh, once when we went to Mayapur with my daughter, younger daughter, and Mary Vadi Banti, Mary Jijaji, we all went with over there to the Ravidarshan. Well, we go luckily, we got the chance to have some like three hour, four hour to get the association with him, the Guru Bhakti Jiru Maharaji. What happened is uh, when go the you know Mangla Arthi, then they everybody get together in the Kongshal Bhavan. He's, uh, he's he's on the first floor, we on the third floor. But the thing is that we think maybe chalo darshani kar lete hain, chale jate hain. But I don't know how come at that time within uh, after the Mangla Arthi, he always have a sadhana between that time, yeah. But all of a sudden, with so many disciples were sitting in the room, I don't know how come he knows that we were there. He come out of it, he just said, come inside, under Raja. Jesse I'm looking at the bed, he said, no, 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 don't sit on the floor, come on there. So that's the humbleness of him. I never forget in my life. Mr. Nanda Prabhu, I know that he's not gone anywhere. He's always with us. And that four hour, three, four hour, whatever we, he talks us, everything, asking about us. And we had so many things from him. I never forgot in my life. Those three hours is for me is a three yuga, to be honest. Yeah. And I've, I've been listening, I've seen since well, everything, but is coming. We yes, to we, we got the chances uh, with my, when my mother in law passed away, we got a chance with, uh, to sit around with him as well. And with my sis, my younger sister in law, as they were like Vandana and Raja, you know this, yeah. We met him in their houses as well. But those three hours, no, four hours, I never forgot in my life. And he made so many prasadam for us. And he didn't make it, but he said to the disciples to bring in my room when we were there. And we said, Guru Maharaj, we know eating that much. He said, no, Punjabi people both cut in. And I was laughing at that. So those things, you know, it's not that uh, it's material where we know that we need everything. We need him this time as well. But I don't think so. He's gone anywhere. He's always with us. But thank you very much for asking. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hi. Thank you, Mataji. Very kind of you to share with us. Um, Sundari Mataji, are you there? Hare Krishna. Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? I can. It's stalling a little bit. Maybe if you turn off your video. Hare Krishna. Krishna. To hear you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Just maybe if you turn off your video, it'll be a little bit easier. Please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Madhuranandan Prabhu, yes. and Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, I would like to share um, my uh, experiences with the Bhakti Chur Maharaj. And it's just when I first joined ISKCON, we were going to like listen to every Maharaj's lectures and we were really Gorangi was very small she was I think uh, I think three months old when we met Bhakti Chur Maharaj and uh, Ramanuja Prabhu took us and introduced her to Maharaji and um, we told Maharaji that my daughter's name is Gorangi and my name is Sunita and after that I was very shy I, I was always like standing in the corners so I think uh, after two days or three days, I was standing in the corner in the temple and Maharaj is meeting everyone after the class. And uh, he looked at me, he said, oh, how are you, Sunita? How's Gorangi? And like I was, 
I was so shocked, like Maharaj knew Gorangi's name. And uh, it's like he remembered everyone's names and he remembered every face. So although like um, I, I never went in the front and he's always given me the look like say Hare Krishna to me from far. And uh, it's a big loss and we really miss him. And he's always with us and he's united all of us, all, all his disciples are wonderful. Yadurani, Vrindadevi, Vrindavilasani, everyone, they have so much love for everyone. It's all come from Guru Maharaj, their Guru Maharaj, and he's wonderful. He's, he's, he's united the whole world and he's wonderful. And one time uh, there was some occasion and I think it was his disciples were celebrating his birthday in in the temple reception and everybody was going in the front for the cake to share his maha 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 and and he looked at me and gorangi and he he pointed at us like come and take some maha so we went and took maha from him that was like great mercy on us and thank you madranandar prabhu Mataji, thank you so much for sharing. He's yeah. always with us. He's always with us. Thank you. Um, and then it falls to Yadharani, Mataji. I'm sure you've had a chance to kind of say much and um, talk about your spiritual master a lot. So I'd like to ask specifically if there's any instruction you could share with us or anything that you could give us to help us um, follow in the mood of your spiritual master more or just anything that you would like to say. I was just going to say that Badra Mataji is on. So I think oh, yes. oh, wonderful. we should okay. have, have a, a chance to say something. No problem. Yeah, very good idea. Sorry, I, I don't know how I, I skipped you. Sorry, Mataji. Um, no. Mother Mataji, please, if you could kindly share. We'd really appreciate it. Sorry for missing me. No, that's all right. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, Mataji Prabhu. It's um, like, uh, you know, I didn't have much uh, personal association. Uh, with Maharaj, but uh, he inspired me through his devotees, and uh, you can see is they are all like brothers and sisters. And I was feeling like I do want to um, have personal association and this is the first retreat I booked for uh, Radha Des and um, because of the situation it's been cancelled but um, the way I see is Maharaj has always um, wanted to bring everybody together and preach and serve Srila Prabhupada. And he did so wonderfully throughout his life and till last breath. And the way his departure was especially made everybody come together so intensively and made everybody feel about each other need and each other's pain and love. And one thing I still is sometimes is it is like it does so many things comfort and so many things you don't understand still. But recently, and Krishna and Guru Maharaj and uh, Prabhupada is always, time to time, gives you a helping hand and make you stand up when we pray. And uh, recently, I just uh, wanted to share one, um, uh, the quote has been posted uh, from uh, by uh, Radhanath Maharaj that sometimes certain situation 
we will not understand and sometimes it feels really painful but when we and we can't see how can that be lord's mercy but if we in this situation if we pray to our guru maharaj and sila prabhupada and krishna that please give me strength and knowledge to understand your mercy in this situation and i really like that a lot and it helps a lot and um, uh, something about uh, bhakti churu maharaj is i feel like personally feel like you know his disciples with uh, all his cons members you feel like brothers and sisters natural family and uh, maharaj with maharaj you feel, i feel i felt like i can always approach as a father and uh, even uh, with uh, respect of guru maharaj but at the same time uh, is certain special feeling about that that's how i personally feel and that's all i can say about bhakti chur maharaj hari krishna Thank you so much, Mataji. Really appreciate that. Um, I, it appears we're going to get cut off in the next three minutes. So, um, if I can ask um, Dharma Beer Prabhu, sorry, you're you're muted, Prabhu. So maybe if you want to instruct what to do next. Sorry, Madhuran and the Prabhu, we have hardly two minutes. Shall I book the third one? If I should book the third one for some time. we have to end this meeting then i will be able to book and share the link on the whatsapp perfect yeah if you oh. can share the link on the whatsapp sure. group, we, will, yeah. we will all jump there yeah. in a moment thank you, thank you i will end this one thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.